I'm here to break down whether or not the Revlon, what are you? Revlon blow dryer? Oh my God, I don't even know the name of it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hello, how are you? How are we all? If you don't know me, my name is Sarah Palmira and I love chatting about clean beauty, sometimes skincare, makeup, beauty in general. I love chatting about it, love telling you my thoughts on it, and I love kind of breaking down any myths that you might have due to the very, very skillful marketing tactics of many, many brands. Today I'm gonna break down which of these guys is better. If you guys have watched my new arrivals at Sephora video, you know that I purchased the Amika one for 100 doll hairs, which is pretty expensive. And then upon purchasing that, I was told by many of you that the Revlon might be the same thing. <laughs> So obviously I was pretty upset, but more than upset, I was curious. I wanted to know, is there a difference in quality? Did I just waste all my money? And so that is what I'm here to do for you today because there are so many of these guys on the market. So the point being that it's really important to figure out which is worth your money and if there is a difference in quality. So the Amica retails for $100. You can find it at Sephora and at Amica. It's supposed to be very smoothing, make your hair very shiny and soft. It's very easy as a product. It's essentially shaped like a round brush, but it blows out air to kind of do the two-in-one instead of you having to hold on to the hair dryer and use a round brush. It's supposed to basically solve that problem, which I'm all here for. It has three different settings. It has a cool setting, a low setting, and a high setting. And so it has cool and hot air. Now, it also has two different kinds of brushes. It has little short bristles and long bristles. So the short bristles are supposed to detangle. And the fact that it has two different kinds of brushes is supposed to minimize breakage. It's also tourmaline coated, which means that it emits these negative ions to reduce frizz. Now the Revlon One Step retails for $59 and you can find it at Ulta or on the Revlon website or at the drugstore. And it's essentially the same thing. So the bristles look identical to the Amica one only on the website, it describes them as a nylon pin and tufted bristles. So it's supposed to really guarantee flexibility and it has the same speed and cooling options. It has a cool and then a low and a high. So the only thing that it doesn't say is that it's tourmaline coated, but I don't really know if that makes a difference because it says it has the ion technology, which the Amica one claims to have as well. So there's a $40 price difference here. So let's get to the bottom of it. I am going to show you a demo and show you exactly what it looked like as I styled both sides and then I'm going to give you my pros and cons. I have been testing these guys out for the last couple of weeks and I definitely have some thoughts. Right now I touched up my hair so there shouldn't be a difference from one side to another but let me tell you one definitely performed better than the other. All right so my hair is damp and I'm going to go on this side with the Revlon and on my right side with the Amiga. Okay, starting with the Revlon, I'm just brushing out my hair with the wet brush and taking it section by section, really separating it and pulling it taut. And then I kind of twist the barrel at the end to add a little bit of dimension and curl. And then as it's drying, I take larger sections and I keep doing that twisting motion. I start on the cool setting just to get everything kind of dry. And then I go back in with the hot setting to kind of finish and seal everything off. That's always been my methodology. It did actually take a bit longer than the Amica side. I don't know why, because again, they look super identical, but the Amica side, I noticed there was less pulling and I felt like my hair could go through the bristles very, very easily. And it just felt a lot softer to do. I had to work less hard. However, I will say that the Amica is actually heavier. The physical brush is heavier in my hands than the Revlon. All right, you guys, so now I finished both sides of my hair and I definitely have some thoughts. So this side is the Amica side. I feel like it feels really silky and soft. It feels pretty dry from throughout the entire head, including the scalp. And it didn't take me very much time at all. I think it looks really healthy. It looks really smooth. And then over here we have the Revlon side. It... <laughs> It's not good, in my opinion. It looks kind of... 
I don't know, it looks kind of dry to me and it looks frizzy, especially on the top of my head. I'm sure you can tell this side is really smooth and then this side we get a little bit of frizz here. So besides the finished result, which I definitely think is different, let me tell you how I feel about both of these guys. So in comparison, I was pretty surprised by how loud this was. My ears by the end were ringing and I was only using it for I'd say eight to 10 minutes and my ears were ringing afterwards. And so as someone who sings for a living and so my ears are really important to me, I'm not sure how comfortable I would feel using something that was so, I guess, incredibly loud that it was making my ears ring. I don't know what the effects of doing that every day would be. Actually, I did find some articles online that were talking about how loud this was and that those amount of hertz could cause damage to the hearing. So I'm just kind of, that kind of worries me, I guess. Another thing I noticed was the brush. So even though this was identical to the Amica, it looks identical, it actually was a bit more rigid just in feel and it pulled on my hair a little bit. Whereas I felt like the Amica just really glides through and I tried to brush both sides exactly the same to make sure there was absolutely absolutely no bias. And even though I've had the Amica for longer, I still feel like it was never that stiff when I first bought it. And so that is something also to note. Now this has three settings, just like the Amica it has cool, low, and high. I did feel like the cool wasn't cool at all. It was just more of a warm, which is fine. But what I did notice was that the high was hotter than the Amica. But what was weird was the air kind of felt like it wasn't coming out in a proper stream outside of the brush. It felt like it kind of diffused everywhere. So my ear got kind of red and hot and it actually traveled down to the handle. The handle got really, really hot and I really didn't like that. The longer I used it, the more hot the handle got. Whereas the Amica, I never notice that this handle gets too hot when I use it. I feel like it directs a stream of air pretty consistently. I also don't like how on the Revlon, you see these little d divisions here. They're kind of cute, but there's like a plastic division here to give it a little pizzazz, I guess. Well, I don't really like that because I found that my strands of hair would get caught in between. And so sometimes it would pull my hair. So I didn't love that as well. All in all, I wasn't that impressed. I'm really glad that I went with this one because is $100 really annoyingly expensive when you compare it to this price point? Yes. But I feel like, okay, I definitely see a difference in quality here. I feel like I'm getting a better product. And genuinely, if I had bought the Revlon first before purchasing the Amica, I don't know if I would have been impressed enough to keep using it daily because I feel like I get better results with a round brush and a hair dryer. I just, I'm not impressed. I feel like it actually fried my hair a little bit. Like it, my hair on this side feels really good and then on this side it feels really dry. So I don't like that. I also did wanna say I did prep my hair with heat protectants. Yeah, so I did the same thing on either side but I didn't really prefer this result. So all in all, I actually don't think I would recommend this. I found it way too loud and I also just felt like it, it was annoying to use. And also, I did wanna mention that even though I used it for the same amount of time on each side, I actually timed myself. I'm looking at myself in the mirror here and there are parts of my hair that are still damp. Like it almost feels like it really heated the outside of my hair without like getting into all the little strands, which is so bizarre because again, I can't explain it. It looks identical. So clearly there's just a little bit better technology at play. This one, I felt like it just dried my hair all the way through. I don't know if you can tell, but I can definitely feel a difference. I also want to say that um, the vibrations from the internal hair dryer started making their way down the handle and it was kind of vibrating. Not super annoying, but just something I noticed because the Amica does not do that. So yeah, 
Okay, so that's kind of where I'm lying on this. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to say that this was a dupe and it was just as good. I love when I tell you guys that the cheaper version is better, but I just have to be honest, and I think that the more expensive version is way, way better. I would just save your money and invest in this one. If you're going to be using it for a longer period of time and you really want your hair to be healthy, I have not noticed any negative effects from this one. I feel like it's just the same as using a hair dryer. I haven't noticed my hair feel dry or frizzy or anything like that. So when it comes to things that you're going to be using every day, just invest in this guy. I feel like Amica is a good company. So there you have it. My thoughts on Revlon versus Amica. I think Amika wins by a landslide. I hope this video was helpful, you guys. Please let me know if you want to see more What Should You Buy videos. They're always so much fun. I really enjoy them. I feel like when I'm on the buying end of things, I'm always curious about how different items compare. So I love doing this series. So if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know to keep making more of these. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. It means so much to me and I'm so excited to have you a part of this little online community that we've created. But without further Further ado, I am going to go. I will see you very, very soon. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you agree or if you have another hair tool that you think rivals both of these. Drop them in the comments below. I always love learning from you guys. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!